water. One author calls it the source of life. Some can even say it's a cousin of air. It covers over 70% of the Earth's surface and makes up to 70% of our bodies. It's one of the greatest natural resources and it is fundamental to human survival. How much do we actually understand about the importance of clean water? Less than 3% of water on Earth is safe for human consumption. Across the globe, 650 million people do not have access to safe drinking water and that poses a great threat to human existence. Many children die each year due to poor sanitary practices and unsafe drinking water. This tasteless, colourless, odourless liquid, which is an essential contributor to almost everything we do, can also act as a courier for some of the world's deadliest diseases. Here in Barbados, we too have experienced the negative effects of reduced access to clean water. As our economy develops and our population increases, so will our demand for clean water. Charged with the task of supplying water is the Barbados Water Authority. This government-owned entity is battling with an ageing pipeline infrastructure and reduced funding. These constraints have caused the northern parishes of the island to be plagued with continuous water outages sometimes lasting for days on end. In this episode, we travel to Rock Hall St Andrew, where we speak to some of the people living in one of the affected areas and hear some of their concerns. In this situation, we got up here with the water. It's a very serious situation. It's definitely serious, because this is months now. Actually from about a year before, this water was plenty full, really serious. Yeah, two years ago, from around October. Uh, you get the water, goes off for about three months, and come back on for a couple of days, and then it goes in. Most thing you get come to the top is ear, you know. I actually have um, an 800 gallon water tank. Um, presently, which is a fairly big tank. However, um, many times my, my tank runs out of water, although I have such a, a, a large tank. So the, the, the problem the problem is, 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 is very bad as it relates to water. A lot of customers is complaining that they can't take a shower to go to work, right? They can't cook. A lot of people do like the bottle of water, you understand? And you know, it don't feel good like when a fella go in the backyard and he work, or he tend to animals, or like that when he come and he can't wash his hands. Well, them is the complaints I just hear the people talking about. The fellas is going to go pee in the bush. Because we don't, they ain't got any water to flush the toilet. So if you keep it like a little karaoke or something, you got to abandon it, you understand? And it don't look good. Because if ladies come to my shop now, they can't use the bathroom. And ladies ain't want to go in bush because the bathroom can't flush. Right? And you know when you're flushing after that, you can start, you can start smelling it. Man, I think, I think it's terrible. It ain't that good. Because you just get a lot of brown, rusty water. You understand? And like, when you call these guys, when you call them, then it's take three and four days to come, right? And when they come, then do the same thing over and over and over. And they don't make no sense asking them questions because nobody can answer the questions. <laughs> all they can tell you for, refer to this body and talk to this body. If you talk to this body, all they can tell you we can get the problem sorted out. And they don't ever get sorted out. So you're back at square one. But you know every day, they got more and more water problems coming up, coming up, you know? And a lot of the children they start going from school too, you know. Because when they get up, they can't take a shower. Yeah, everybody don't want to be in a bucket of water. <laughs> right? This, this, this is what we did doing 50 years ago. Be in a bucket of water, <laughs> bring water and bring from the point. 50 years ago, we doing it now, so we, we ain't getting away. We ain't getting away at all. And look, when the water, when the water truck come round, 
it is all it is gone wrong so they don't even start because they just drive around they don't even start and so then they said they go go and come back and they don't come back right so uh, yeah, I know it. and look so even they come in water too they say the water for drinking <laughs> for washing it for this and then for that so you're still in trouble but we had a pipe burst not far from me for four months and all that pipe was doing was throwing away millions of gallons of water you know and no one seems to be able to find the problem a pipe burst up here be gravity fed and that little pipe baffles the Barbados water authority for four months and out of that my water came back on the Tuesday night the Tuesday the Thursday came home my water was turned off the Thursday came my water was turned off then they called Mr. Yearwood at the water authority the night and night see what gone wrong with it show me the assurance that the people in Rock Hall are being affected with water they tell us put the, num the account numbers on the petition and it seems you put you, 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 you victimize me because my water the water just came on you come and turn off my water huh? well, he tell me why I had to owe the water to, some kind of money I sent me for four months and get water huh? Huh? but he assured me well, he tell me about 10 o'clock my water will be back on the following day and it did come back on I got a plan how I, how I wash, how I bathe, you know what I mean? So even something like cooking, I, I got to make sure that um, I, I actually have the tank. Although I have a filter attached to the tank, um, when the water is on, I got to make sure that I have the, the water that flows to the tank off, make sure the water that is, is really bad run off first because I don't want any of of that um, real contaminated water because it really does a toll on the filter and it has to change um, filter very very often I actually have um, some herbs and, and stuff um, and, and some veg and um, unless I get rain it's problems so the lack of water is affecting me in, in, in every sense the BWA currently supplies approximately 35 million gallons of water per day to just over 100,000 customers. However, many affected residents no longer have faith in this institution to provide long-term solutions to their water problems and feel a sense of being ignored and left by the wayside. We've been suffering for years, the same outages we've been having. You've got to sit here and wait for the truck to come and give you water. No. Some trucks turn up that on Mali, the truck drivers curse you, all such like, you know. And I, you know, that is, that is the kind I can remember here last year. I was doing something in the back when the truck came. I said, well, I got to pass back here. I came up and stopped the truck. <laughs> Man, then two truck drivers dri driving the second. Mama wash me down and cuss. No. But I know two young men could have cussed a stink. And I know a man could have taken that much cuss like that cuss. At the end of the day, tell them we can take the water from them. For that water, I don't think that water was good. Seriously. Huh? Just because I stopped the truck, you mind tell me? I should have stopped the truck, come across, I should have taken the truck when it go across. You can imagine you hear a water truck coming, and probably in the, the toilet, relieving yourself, all the kids maybe, and you got to run out to go and catch water. Huh? You could imagine the attitude of these people. I see one come one day and deliver water, we ain't getting the water here for days, yes the animals have to have water, he run up and deliver some water to a chicken farm, I hit out the water, I come against the man asked me what water you want, and I know that truck could have, when they pull off that then truck, two back wheels could have picked a sound like a, like a car, and gone down the road, you know, you know that is the kind of things that we get in Barbados, a young lady called me some a few months ago and asked me if the water truck come up. And I said she the water truck come up and gone back. No. She tell me the truck come up and she tell the guy there wants the water up the hill. The driver said he ain't coming up there. I tell me when she get down the road now on the bus. She see the truck down there in the cat road throwing away the water that people up here will enjoy. And it's not the first time that it happened. A couple of years ago we I had that problem with the truck. My refused to come up this day driving and give me water. You know. I had pigs, I had chickens, I need a lot of water up here. Truck my team, if I want water, I got to come down there for it. You know? And I draw your attention to the Barbies Water Authority. You know? I went down the hill one day and see the man down there evening, throwing the water in the river. 
Yeah. Throwing the water in the, in the river. So I guess he considered we Yeah. And only certain superior people are supposed to get the water. So if you look and see the attitude of the people at the Baptist Water Authority, you hire a lot of people that don't know what's going on. You see where you got the aggressive pair people come and turn off the water. Yeah? Swear and curse people because they may pay the old pay. Turn off the water. You could get people more aggressive when they can fix the when they can fix the pipes and so on. Don't only look at the money that's coming in, or the case maybe. <laughs> I would like government to instruct the Barbados Water Authority that the people in Rock Hall is people too. That you collect a monthly bill from them every month. You should at least give them water. After speaking to some of the Rock Hall residents, we did some research of our own to try and understand why water outages lasted for so long. We found a massive water tank about 800 metres away from the community, hidden away in the bushes. We were told it was built by the BWA, but don't understand why it was not connected to the water supply system in Rock Hall. We also took a look at the pumping station for the Rock Hall community, located in Black Bess. It was plagued with problems. Some of the issues include faulty and outdated equipment. We contacted the Barbados Water Authority to try and get some answers, but was told nobody was available for comment. However, on the BWA's website, there are three main problems outlined. Firstly, there has been a noted reduction in production from the wells feeding Golden Ridge and Castle Grant Reservoir due to falling water tables, which has been evident by pumping air. There have also been more frequent disruptions in supply due to an increase in the number of burst mains per day and lastly increased irrigation water demands from the public water supply network due to drought conditions the island is experiencing. We travel next to CERMES, the Centre for Resource Management and Environmental Studies at the University of the West Indies, Cave Hill Campus. This department's focus is on tropical island environmental management and its mission is to make a significant contribution to sustainable development in the Caribbean region. We speak with director and lecturer, Dr. Adrian Cashman. Okay, so people are complaining that they're not getting enough waters um, into their homes. So we go and ask the question, why why is that? There are two things going on. First of all, we've had a drought. During 2015, 2016, rainfall below average, so we're not getting recharge. So that's one thing. Drought is one thing. But it's not just about drought. It's also about the water supply system as well. So let's just take the water supply system to start with. The system that takes water from the ground, transports it across the island, and brings it to you, the consumer. All right. If you talk to BWA, you know, they will tell you that parts of the system are 150 years old. Pipes being put in uh, out uh, to bring water into, into Bridgetown. So over the years, you've in, we've invested in building the infrastructure. But like anything, if you've got a car, for example, you don't just buy the car and run it. You take it in for maintenance every six months, every 12 months. And it's the same with a water supply system. You don't just build it. You've got to look after it. You've got to operate it and maintain it. So, and some of it sometimes needs replacing. You replace an oil filter in your car, you need to replace parts of your water supply system. That has been, in my opinion, one of the failures over not just the last year, because these things don't just manifest themselves in a year. This is something that goes back decades. Underinvestment in operation and maintenance and maintaining a water supply system. On December the 10th, 2015, the Board of Directors of the Caribbean Development Bank approved a loan of US $39.5 million to the government of Barbados to help with upgrading the country's water supply network. This financing was intended to provide urgent help needed to tackle the issues of ageing infrastructure 
increasing water outages and operational inefficiencies which challenge the water sector in the country. So we just haven't invested enough in making sure that the pipes are in a good condition, that they are being replaced at a rate that they should be replaced to maintain a good water supply system. So you've had that is one problem. And we can go on a bit more about whether there's enough storage tanks, whether we've got the most, the, the most appropriate system for you know, measuring how much goes into the households, how much we're producing, whether there's the right balance between you know, the production and the amount that is going inside. We could talk about leakage, about pipe bursts as well, which are symptoms of a system that is not being maintained properly. If you're getting increased levels of burst, some the, the burst level, the, the leakage level of, BW, of BWA, of our water supply system, is not what it should be. It's not anywhere near international benchmark norms. So you have one problem there. The next problem you have is the one to do with the water resources. You could have the best water supply system in the world. But if you haven't got the water to go into it, it's not going to help you. So you need to, we need to look at what the water resources are. Well, the water resources come from rainfall. You come onto it and you can only capture the rain that comes onto the island. If it falls offshore, it ain't no good to you. So it's got to fall on the island, right? We don't have rivers here, we rely on groundwater. So that water, the water we, we use, is got to be the water that comes down in rain, that infiltrates into the ground, and is stored in the cast aquifer, in the coral limestone aquifer. Right? We know that one year we can get really good rainfall, and in other years we get very poor rainfall. So there's, there's natural variability there. Groundwater aquifers are quite good because they provide storage which can balance out some of that variability there. But what we've had over the last few years from 2015 is a series of really low rainfall months. If you have low rainfall, it is not recharging the aquifer. So the amount that is available to be taken out is smaller than you would like it to be. Not only that, it means the water level has dropped, so it's a bit more difficult to get out. If it's not recharging, you know, it's not coming through, you're going to get the salt water, the seawater, also coming in, because that balance between seawater and fresh water is being altered. So we're getting a little bit more, certainly on the, from the coastal aquifers along the west coast, we're getting higher levels of salinity in there. Which, al which is, although the water's there, in terms of volume, in terms of quality, you can't use it. So drought can not only be about quantity, it can be also be about quality as well. Understanding that there is a change in the quality and quantity of water, we wanted to know how the farming community is taking some measures to adapt to the ever-changing waters. We met with leading expert John Paul from the Barbados Agricultural Society. The BAS is a farmer's organisation. It was actually established, and don't make that fool, by statute. In the days when you did not incorporate companies, basically you passed an act in Parliament and was incorporated, that's in 1845. Uh, what we do, we focus on the issues that impact on farmers. From a point of view of the policy perspective, in terms of we try to ensure that the policies that the country has basically are, in, are in, environmentally friendly to farming. Um, we also focus on the whole question of trying to ensure that we have best practices continuing in farming because one of the big things for us is the ability 
of farming to contribute or agriculture in general. But it is very important that we, we recognize that it can still and it does still make a contribution to, our, to the economy in general. Uh, the other issue, of course, is that of food security for us is very important. We asked John Paul why are some farmers not taking the necessary steps to ensure there is enough stored clean water for their farms? I think it's really one, I, I don't think enough farmers are adopting it on a large scale. And you think it's comfort. People feel that somehow, by magic, that, you know, somehow the problems that we're experiencing in water today will not get any worse, right? So they feel that somehow, you know, what experts are predicting that we are likely to get increased um, uh, rainwater shortages or something like that, it's not going to happen. The thing is, it is likely to happen. So, you know, um, we have to prepare ourselves for that eventuality. And farmers something put that blind belief in the system without taking adequate safeguards. So many times, sometimes, you hear farmers complain, I'm not getting water from the Barbers Water Authority. Those same farmers sometimes do not have any type of rainwater collection systems at all. And in some cases, we have built into the incentives that government has. Um, some measure of subsidy for the farmer who invests in that particular direction. The other thing is that sometimes they do invest, but they do invest badly, and that's really the whole question of the appropriate use of technology. That sometimes we hear about technology, but we sometimes we don't use it appropriately or seek to maximize the benefits that we can get from the new technologies that are applied. So all of these issues are things that we need to address um, and get farmers really to be more sensitive, first of all, to the need to basically do more um, rainwater rain collection, more water conservation, but also to, at the same time, they have to recognize that with the new technologies, it can give them a competitive advantage in terms of ensuring that they get water all year round instead of just put some, some time to the year. Because there will be times when the systems at the Barbados Water Authority will fail, not because of any malice of trying to set out to do anything to the farmer, but because of the fact that nature is that way, they, at some time they will fail. We are seeing now people being much more efficient in the use of water. Um, and that is true, for instance, the fact that they're using technology to be able to apply the appropriate amounts. Um, drip irrigation is becoming extremely common. Fertigation, in terms of how you're applying um, fertilizers to plants, all of that is becoming so much better. Okay, you're controlling the systems much better and you're making much greater use of the scarce resources that you have available to you, even in terms of livestock production. Right, um, we are seeing now people embracing all the new technologies in terms of livestock production. It's becoming different. It's not just a question of actually putting an animal out, out there on the farm and letting it do what it has. The, the whole science of it, you're taking that into consideration. The whole biology of it, you're taking into consideration. So it is becoming different. And I think, in, in a sense, that what we are seeing is an individual much more scientifically oriented in terms of you know, understanding what you're trying to achieve. Um, you see that kind of individual coming and it, it will get better. The delivery of pipe water goes as far back as the 1850s, when the water supply in Barbados was provided by a privately owned company known as the Bridgetown Waterworks Company, which was founded in 1857. The Barbados Water Authority was established on the 8th of October 1980 to replace the Waterworks Department of Government. It then commenced operations on April the 1st, 1981. I think you have to look at it as being more of a systemic problem that has, not, that has been allowed to get out of hand there. And now what we're doing is um, we're scrambling to look for solutions to make water more immediately available. And people are looking at desalination, okay. for example, as, as, as a solution. But my, my concern over that sort of thing is, is this the most cost-effective solution? Is desalination the right solution? If we take that amount of money, could we invest it in doing something else which would actually in the long run be more sustainable and that sort of debate 
that sort of evaluation I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing it being talked about. So should we be investing much, much more in leakage reduction in pipe replacement, which takes time, it takes years to do, it's an ongoing process, but it will, could reduce leakage by 20%, 30%. That, that is water that is way being wasted at the moment. The FTC, or Fair Trading Commission, evolved from its predecessor, the Public Utilities Board. It was responsible for regulating public utilities, such as electricity and telephone services, from 1955 until 2001. But as Barbados developed, the need for a new body with a broader mandate to deal with other areas which have become important, such as fair competition and consumer rights. The Fair Trading Commission eventually came into being on January 2, 2001, through the Fair Trading Commissions Act. On May 13, 2017, the FTC hosted a series of town hall meetings in an effort to engage the public on water-related issues and hear their views and concerns. It sought to establish minimum mandatory levels of service from the BWA and set minimum standards of service for the BWA. These standards address a range of issues, including meter reading, response to complaints, water quality and compensation for customers. This is an attempt to try and bring some balance back to the people in the communities. Having heard from the residents in Rock Hall and the challenges they are facing, with no proper communication from the BWA, as to why the water outages last for so long, and what is the reason for not connecting the massive water tank in the area. We too have heard from experts Dr Adrian Cashman and John Paul, who share their analysis on the water woes, giving us a better understanding and explanation to the current water problems. We heard that storing water from heavy rainfall is only part of a solution, as the drought season is lasting for longer periods, the unknown amount and frequency of water wastage due to burst mains and leakage of household taps, toilets and showers which are not being managed and maintained efficiently to international benchmark standards. However, evidence has shown that our population is increasing and more than one million tourists who come to our shores every year create a demand for more businesses to open. That means more toilets, taps, showers and other water appliances will be used, putting an even greater strain on our water demands that are currently at 35 million gallons per day. The new unpredictable demands for water will have an even greater strain on the BWA's underfunded inefficient water infrastructure. This eventually creates an even greater challenge to maintain as frequent water outages are more likely to occur, impacting on many lives, homes and businesses on this beautiful island.